Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Madrid Ball. I hope you all are doing good. We have witnessed an absolutely pulsating match with end-to-end -end staff, thrilling football lovers all around the world. It was a game which offered high-quality attacking, and when you combine that with shabby defending, you just know you are in for an entertaining night, and that is exactly what yesterday's clash had to offer. And obviously, we're going to talk about how Madrid were on the brink of digging their own graves, but let's just take a moment and think about what the scoreline means in the overall context of the tie. Madrid are very much alive, I don't think there's any need to panic here, and yes, we can be critical, we can say that Real Madrid couldn't match Man City in a number of departments. We were our class at times, but I think, in a way, we did expect that. City have some brilliant players, they have a coach whose attacking tactics are well-renowned all around the world, they have a better team structure at the moment, and we always knew it was going to be difficult. So considering what could have happened, I'd say I'm okay with the fact that Real Madrid are just down by a single goal. And don't get me wrong, Real Madrid are a team that needs significant improvement, even if we win the UCL. From a long-term perspective, I would still say that to play better football, a few things need to be tweaked. But strictly keeping the tie in mind, we have somehow managed to keep ourselves alive. We are still in contention for a spot in the final, and maybe, just maybe, we'll have another magical night at the Bernabeu, which is very much possible, keeping the current season in mind. So in this video, we'll do the post-match analysis of Man City versus Real Madrid. We'll talk about the significant happenings of the game, and without further ado, let's get started. And having a look at the lineup, there was Kothwine Goal. In the back four, we had Alaba, Militao, Carvajal, and Fulon Mendy. In the midfield, we had Cruz, Modric, and Valverde. And finally, attack, we had Benzema, Vinicius, and Rodrigo. I'll skip the shoutout section today because none of you had predicted such an emphatic scoreline. But sharing some thoughts on the starting 11, we all were interested to see how the midfield battle was going to work in the absence of Carlos Casemiro. Cruz was the one playing the role of a defensive midfielder with Modric on the left and Valverde on the right. But let's just say we didn't win the midfield battle against City. We were outdone for pace and strength. The intensity of the City players was too much for the Real Madrid midfield and Tony Cruz wasn't effective at all as a defensive midfielder. He couldn't cover the ground that Casemiro is so effective in doing. Usually we see the Brazilian getting in the centre-back positions when one of the defenders is pulled out of the back line. But with Tony Cruz, it just wasn't possible. It simply isn't his trade. It would be wrong to lay all the blame on him. However, I would like to mention that I have been a bit disappointed with how Cruz has played this season. You can partly put it down to the tactics of Angelotti where Cruz is required to cover more ground than usual, but I just feel that there has been a drop-off in his game. He's not quick enough, lacking a bit of agility, and sometimes he loses the duels that he should be winning. So definitely, he's going through some changes, and is it a phase or is it simply father time catching up with him? The subsequent games will give a better picture, but surely I'd like a bit more intensity from the German sniper. And talking about the first half in general, Real Madrid were off to the worst possible start. Man City came out with the guns blazing, they were making some slick passes, the energy in the movement almost looked like the players had taken the pitch after drinking a can of Red Bull, and Real Madrid simply couldn't match that. Just look at this instance, the City player was passionately chasing Alaba and Coutoua. The effort that they were putting in was commendable, and this forced Coutoua into conceding a corner. You can also look at the image here, City were pressing Madrid very high, and Madrid found it very difficult to play from the back. City they were not giving Real Madrid any breathing space and they recovered the ball pretty quickly in the middle of the park. So the home side did find it very easy to attack the lost plan costs. Our defensive structure was downright woeful on the night and individually as well, all our defenders looked to be off the pace. Alaba apparently wasn't 100% ready but about Militao, we can say it was a dismal performance from the Brazilian. We have praised him for his impact in the early parts of the season but in the recent months, we have seen him making some rookie mistakes. Sometimes he takes too much time on the ball, sometimes he fails to anticipate the movement of the opponents and is caught out of position. He has been lacking a sense of conviction lately and that is why Real Madrid must absolutely bring in more centre-backs. I strongly believe in the spirit of positive competition. At the moment, we can see there's no one challenging Alaba or Militao in the squad for the starting centre-back spot and when such a scenario happens, there's a good tendency of players being complacent and they tend to lose a bit of focus. In the face of positive competition, however, players are forced to stay on their toes, fearing that a few mistakes may cost them a spot in the starting eleven and this, I believe, elevates the focus level of the players and the focus of a team overall. So let's see what decision Madrid will take in the summer. Ideally, we need two centre-backs, but I do think Rudiger, most likely, would be the only defender joining the Los Blancos this summer. So all the defensive lapses and the lack of organisation at the back was very disappointing to watch. The Belgian wall was breached twice in 10 minutes, but we all know it could have been much, much more. City lacked clinicality for the amount of chances they created, and thankfully for Madrid, our 
one-man army, Karim Benzema, again displayed his elite mentality. He got some service from Ferland Mendy, but the way he was able to guide the ball beyond Edison was commendable. It didn't put in a lot of power, he was able to get ahead of the defender. It wasn't the most comfortable position to go for goal, but with Benzema at the moment, he's turned on in a totally different way. You give him a sniff and you can be pretty much sure that Benzema will bite you and he will make you pay. He's having a sensational season, the way he's scoring crucial goals in the knockout ties is simply astonishing. And have a look at the way he scored the second goal. It was a Peninka in such a high pressure situation. He kept his cool, he had two bad misses against Osasuna, but this time he cleared his head, knew exactly what he wanted to do, and with nerves of steel, he sent Edison to his left and came up with a clutch finish. It was amazing to watch, certainly sent our adrenaline pumping. It showed that Benzema is playing with a supreme level of confidence, and if Benzema can somehow take us all the way, this could very well be one of the greatest carry jobs in the history of football. So thumbs up to Karim Benzema for keeping the dreams of all the Madridistas alive. He's been a phenomenal player and let's hope the goals will keep flowing effortlessly in the days to come. So we can say it was a game where Real Madrid got dominated at the same time we took our chances on the counter. It was also good to see Vinicius stepping up to make his share of contribution. Going all the way from the halfway line and then coming up with the finish was admirable from the Brazilian. Rodrigo had an off day and couldn't really assert himself in all the chaos. He would have liked to be more impactful but unfortunately he could couldn't leave a mark at the Etihad Stadium. So yes, we made mistakes, we got punished, we lacked focus, but the good news is that we can still be calm about the current situation. We don't have a mountain to climb at the Bernabeu, a positive start and an early goal at home will set up the lost plan course for another magical night. But for the moment, we must go back, take some rest, analyse the mistakes, learn from the mistakes and hopefully we'll come up with better performance in the second leg. So those are my thoughts on the game and let's conclude this video by hearing the thoughts of Carlo Angelotti. The coach assessed the performance of the team as he said, I'm a bit frustrated because we came second best in many of our individual duels in the first half and they scored two goals that we could have avoided had we been paying attention. We managed to produce a reaction and keep the game alive ahead of the return leg. It's a defeat that keeps us in the tie ahead of the second leg at the Bernabeu. We've got to improve defensively because we've got the quality up top to pose them problems in the return leg. Then Angelotti was asked if an open game would suit Real Madrid at the Bernabeu and replied, we conceded goals but we played with a lot of energy on the pitch and we played an open game. Maybe that was because the opposition went ahead but it could be a sign that we are better if we play more openly. Clearly for the return leg, if we defend better, we'll have the chance to make it through. And lastly, Angelotti gave an update on the fitness of Casemiro and David Alaba. He said Casemiro will be in the return leg for sure but Alaba will have to evaluate. To avoid further problems, we took him off but I think both will be available for the second leg. So those are the thoughts of the coach and that concludes the post-match analysis of Man City versus Real Madrid. Do let me know what were your thoughts on the game and what were the things that caught your eye right in the comments below. I'll see you soon. Till then, take care. Glory to Madrid. And as always, a la Madrid.